Our gathering hymn is number 641. All are welcome. As Abel, I invite you to stand. Sunday, the uh, 12th Sunday after Pentecost, and this great day where all are welcome, and uh, we especially uh, are pleased uh, and overjoyed that uh, we welcome uh, Reverend Brooke, Brooks Fisher into the household of the child of God in baptism today. And so uh, after the service, uh, please uh, meet the newest member here at St. Matthew's. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Merciful God, 
We confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way instead of putting others before ourselves. We long to take the best seats at the table when met by those in need. We often pass by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life. Save us from ourselves and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Look up and hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are free to love as God loves. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the God, you resist those who are proud and give grace to those who are humble. Give us the humility of your Son that we may embody the generosity of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first reading is from Proverbs 20, chapter 25. Do not put yourself forward in the king's presence or stand in the place of the great. For it is better to be told, come up here, than to be put lower in the presence of a noble. 
Word of God, word of life. Please read responsibly with me Psalm 112. Hallelujah. Happy are they who fear the Lord and have great delight in God's commandments. Wealth and riches will be in their house, and their righteousness will last forever. It is good for them to be generous in lending and to manage their affairs with justice. They will not be afraid of any evil rumors. Their heart is steadfast, trusting in the Lord. They have given freely to the poor, and their righteousness stands fast forever. They will hold up their head with honor. Our second reading this morning comes from Hebrews chapter 13. Let mutual love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing that, some have entertained angels without knowing it. Remember those who are in prison as though you are in prison with them. Those who are being tortured as though you yourselves were being tortured. Let marriage be held in honor by all, and let the marriage bed be kept undefiled, for God will judge fornicators and adulterers. Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have, for he has said, I will never leave you or forsake you. So we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can anyone do to me? Remember your leaders, those who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus is the Christ. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Through him then, let us continually offer a sacrifice of praise to God, that is, the fruit of lips that confess his name. Do not neglect to do good and share what you have, for sacrifices are pleasing to God. Word of God, word of life. At this time, I'd like to invite the children forward for the children's sermon. Good morning. Are you guys... No good mornings? Really? Again? Someday. You're going to say good morning back. All right. Well, I want you guys to look at my trophy. Isn't it great? And it's all for my outstanding performance. I'm just amazing, aren't I? A <laughs> Piper thinks so. <laughs> Do you know who gave this to me? I did. I gave it to myself, because I'm just outstanding. It's kind of silly, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I know, because you're looking at me kind of strange. I mean, how many people would give themselves a trophy? Would you guys? Or would you rather have somebody else give you the trophy? We're not really sure. OK. Well, did you know that something similar like that happened in the Bible? It did. In Luke, it tells a story about guests that came to a wedding. And they picked the special seats, kind of like in front, the seats of honor for like family. And they sat up there instead of being told where they should sit because that wasn't where they were supposed to sit. But they just thought they were important, and they should sit up there. Okay? Well, like this. So they thought they were awarding themselves by doing that. An award has value only because of the people that give it to you and find you worthy of it. Okay? So I'm not worthy to give myself a trophy. These people didn't have a humble spirit, nor did I with my award. Being humble, it's, you're not, you don't think of yourself first. You think of others, okay? And it also says in Proverbs that the Lord detests the proud of heart 
means people who are proud of themselves and think they're like better. Would you rather be around a proud person who thinks they're better or somebody who thinks of other people? I would rather be around pe somebody who thinks of other people first. Yeah, and I hope you too. And he ended the story, Jesus ended the story by telling them for everyone who exalts himself or thinks of himself or exalts himself, doesn't think of himself, is humbled. And he who humbles himself will be exalted. I think I got that right. <laughs> so what can we do about it? When you're, like when you're waiting to be picked on a team, do you just wait quietly, hoping you'll get picked? Or do you like, me, 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 I'm really good. Do you do that or do you just kind of wait? I always kind of waited. Yeah. Do you ever think of yourself as better than someone else? I'm not getting much out of you guys here. <laughs> you're all just listening in, which I'm great. I'm glad you're listening. It's awesome. So you might not say it out loud, but sometimes you're thinking in, on, in your heart about things. So maybe we live with a humble spirit because it's of great worth in God's eyes. So if we don't think so highly of ourselves, but we think of others, that's what God wants to hear. Okay, so let's fold our hands. Ready to fold your hands and bow your heads. All right. Dear God, help us to remain humble and stay worthy in your eyes. In Jesus' name. Ready? Amen. All right, thank you. The lesson for this is 12th Sunday after Pentecost is taken from the 14th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke, beginning with verse 1. Lord, Lord. On one occasion when Jesus was going to the house of, the, of a leader of the Pharisees to eat a meal on the Sabbath, they were watching him closely. When Jesus noticed how the guests chose the places of honor, he told them a parable. When you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not sit down at the place of honor. In case someone more distinguished than you has been invited by your host, and the host who invited both you, uh, both of you may come and say to you, give this person your place. And then in disgrace, you would start to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go and sit down at the lowest place so that when your host comes, he may say to you, friend, move up higher. Then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled and those who humble themselves will be exalted. He said also to the one who had invited him, when you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors in case they may invite you in return and you would be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you. For you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. The gospel of our risen Lord. Please be seated. And all my life, I had a hard time understanding why in Lutheran churches, everyone sat in back. Now today it looks pretty good. We're kind of moved forward. But uh, anywhere I've been, always the back pews fill up first. 
A lot of denominations consider John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him, you know that one. Now I understand that Lutherans place the highest value on don't sit in the places of honor. Sit in the back so that the owner may invite you forward. Joking. I hear a few snickers, but... Yeah, uh, 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 apparently that uh, uh, the adults are in a lull just like the children were in a lull this morning too. Kind of a little slow on the uptake. One of the most difficult tasks uh, the, as I work with uh, prospective bride and groom uh, at their planning their wedding and uh, helping to plan for their lives together, the most difficult thing sometimes is the seating arrangement at the reception banquet. The goal is to give the place of honor, that would be those closest to the head table, or those that are in view that can see the head table, not the ones back in the corner or behind the pole. Give that place of honor to the parents, the grandparents, brothers and sisters if they're not in the wedding party, uncles and aunts. And after that, it becomes more difficult. They're afraid to hurt somebody's feelings because everybody that's invited is important to them. They can maybe avoid the stress of assigning seats uh, by having free-for-all seating. First come, first serve. Maybe just one table for the uh, parents of the bride and the groom. But again, there's probably going to be bruised egos of people who feel they should have a better seat. And then just before the banquet starts, poor Uncle Louie, the bride's favorite uncle comes strolling in. He got lost on the way from the church to the banquet hall. And the only seat left is the one way over in the dark corner with some people that they barely know. So the bride comes up into her least favorite cousin and says, I'd like you to move to this table way off in the corner so Uncle Louie can sit here in front. It's embarrassing. It's a no-win situation. Because eating with others at banquets and on special events is important. I know we'll have a banquet here at First Lutheran on, uh, on Saturday, where we have the funeral of Woody Woods, a longtime member here. At least at, uh, at uh, funeral banquets, we don't have assigned seating. Even when I was growing up, I had a, grew up in a large family and all the uncles and aunts would get together at grandma's house. There'd be a long table and then they'd put additional tables and cover them with tablecloths so it all looked like one. And all the adults would sit there and some of the adult cousins and the kids would be off in another room on card tables, kind of lined up by age. And if one of the cousins, like Cousin Mike, he liked to move himself forward, because Mike would move forward and people would say, hey, you know, I'm older than you, you should go back to that other table. And grandma would have to come down and straighten it out. Say, Mike, you go down to this table. When you get older, then you can come up to this uh, adult table. Anybody relate to that? Banquets are, are important to us. Eating together is important with us. And so is, so it was in Jesus' time that banquets and eating together was an important time. Special meals where respected people were invited. And when special people accepted that invitation, it honored the one who invited them the one who threw the banquet, could say, well, come all to my banquet. You know who's coming? And then they would say his name. Jesus, as a respected rabbi, was one of those that people wanted 
to come to their banquet so that they would be honored by his presence and other people would want to be there. To be seen with the rich and the powerful, to be honored increases a person's status. That might seem trivial to us, but I remind you that in Jesus' time and even nowadays in the Middle East, this was a collective society. They were like a family that helped each other. The ones who were well off would give favors to the ones who weren't as well off. And that gave them honor. So that having honor at a banquet, people would look at you and say, hey, that's an honored person, so I could ask a favor of them and they'll be able to help me. Or those people in the higher stratus would look and say, hey, they're sitting at an honored place, so if they ask me for a favor, I'm going to give them one. I'm going to grant their wish. It makes your life better to be honored. In our gospel lesson today, Jesus noticed how the people were jockeying for position, trying to find that good place, that place of honor. They wanted to be ahead of people they thought they were more important than. And Jesus quotes our first reading from Proverbs that reads, do not put yourself forward in the king's presence or stand in the place of the great. For it is better to be told to come up here than to put, be put lower in the presence of the noble. Is Jesus really teaching us how to gain favor in others' eyes by feigning humbleness, by faking humbleness? that somebody will move us up. Verse 10 in our reading is a little bit of a mistranslation, I'm afraid. It's, it says, friend, uh, someone will come to you. Oh, but when you are invited, go and sit in the lowest place. So when your host comes and sees you, he says, friend, move up higher then you will be honored in his presence and the presence of all who sit at the table with you. Honored really means glory. It should be translated glory. And glory is something you don't obtain. Glory is something that is given to you by God and God alone. So Jesus is saying, by humbling yourself, God will honor you. God will lift you up. God will give you Glory. It's not based on how important you are in an earthly kingdom, but based on the unmerited, unearned love of God for all. Towards the beginning of our worship, we sang the praise song. This is the feast of victory. Christ has triumphed over the world ways. The world would have us honor ourselves, give ourselves a trophy. But Jesus has triumphed over those ways. His blood set us free to be people of God. It goes on, power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, blessing, and glory are his. But he shares all of that with us, his brothers and his sisters. He gives that to those who are humbled, not to those who are pushing and shoving others out of the way to get to the head of the line so that they can be honored. Jesus honors, gives glory to those who wait, those who are humble, to those who wish to stand together with the community of God rather than their desire to stand out in the community of God above others. This feast of the Lamb who was slain has room for all, and all of the places are equal at this banquet table. It's like a big round table. 
our invitation to this banquet, God invites all of his family, the family of God. Those who are in Christ, as Paul tells us in Ephesians 1, chapter 3, or verses 13 and 14, in him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of salvation and believed in him, you were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it to the praise of his glory. The seal of the Holy Spirit guarantees our place at God's table. In the waters of baptism is God's promise that we become in Christ, that we receive the inheritance, Christ's inheritance as sons and daughters, as brothers and sisters of Jesus. Indeed, it is a mystery, something that we ponder over, something that we're amazed at, but it's not something we can really figure out on our own. We accept that mystery by faith. Revy Brooks is coming forward. She's sleeping so peacefully now. <laughs> is coming forward with her parents and her sponsors, those who will be responsible for her spiritual growth as a child of God. And these waters of baptism right here, she will be in Christ, sealed with the Holy Spirit. God's promise that she has and she will receive her inheritance, her place at the banquet table of the feast of the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ. Amen. At this time, I invite forward Revy Brooks Fisher and uh, her. God, who is rich in mercy, gives us new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of baptism. By water and by the word, God delivers us from sin and death and raises us to new life in Jesus Christ. We are all united with the baptized in one body of Christ anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit and joined in God's mission for the life of the world. Parents, Noah, Olivia, called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and the love of God. Do you desire to have your daughter, Revy Brooks Fritz, baptized into Christ? If so, say, do you do. As you bring Revy Brooks to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with the responsibility to live with her among God's faithful people, to bring her to the Word of God in the Holy Supper, to teach her the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, the Ten Commandments, and place in her hands the Holy Scripture, and nurture her faith and prayer so that Revy Brooks may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others and the world God made and work for justice and peace. You promise to help Revy grow in the Christian faith and life. If so, say we do. Sponsors. You promise to nurture Revy Brooks in the Christian faith as you are empowered by the God Spirit to help her live in the covenant of baptism and in communion with the church. If so, say we do. People of God, do you promise to support Revy Brooks and pray for her in her new life in Christ? If so, say we do. As Abel, I invite you to stand for our confession. I ask you to profess your faith in the Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God, the powers of this world that rebel against God, and the ways of sin that draw you from God. If so, say, I renounce them. I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born in the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He ascended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended to heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God?
God, the Holy Spirit. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. I invite you to be seated. Holy God, holy and merciful, holy and mighty, you are the river of life. You are the everlasting wellspring. You are the fire of rebirth. Glory to you for the oceans and lakes, for rivers and streams. Honor to you for cloud and rain, for dew and snow. Your waters are below us, around us, above us. Our life is born in you. You are the fountain of resurrection. Praise to you for your saving waters. Noah and the animals escape the flood. Hagar discovers your well. The Israelites escape through the sea and they drink from the gushing rock. Naaman washes his leprosy away. And the Samaritan woman will never be thirsty again. At this font, holy God, we pray. Praise to you for the water of baptism and for your word that saves us in this water. Breathe your spirit into all who are gathered here and to all creation. Illumine our days, enliven our bones, dry our tears, wash away the sin within us and drown the evil around us. Satisfy all our thirst with your living water, Jesus Christ our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Rabbi Brooks Fritz, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O oh God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give your daughters and sons new birth cleanse them from sin and raise them to eternal life. Sustain Reverie Brooks with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. For every book, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the sign of the cross of Christ forever. She was very happy that she was sealed. Very happy. And so are we all. Right? Reverie Brooks, so let your light shine before others that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Let us welcome the newly baptized. You may return. As you return to your seats, you say we have a chest, a faith chest uh, made by your friends and family here at St. Matthew's Lutheran Church with your baptismal certificate and uh, a medallion and a little Latin, a spark Bible. 
and a prayer shawl. So, welcome. leaders, we pray, uphold all deacons, pastors, and bishops who serve and teach your people. Awaken in your church a spirit of invitation that reaches ever outward. Work through the ministry of your people, especially LRI Lutheran Parish, Lutheran World Relief, and Christmas for Kids. Merciful God, for the well-being of creation and its inhabitants, we pray. Stir in us reverent awe for the beauty of the natural world, for oceans and lakes, rivers and streams, forests and deserts. Merciful God. For the nations and the peoples of the world, we pray, sustain the efforts of those who pursue justice and equity for all. Defend and accompany all immigrants and refugees and all who are persecuted for their ethnic origin or religious beliefs. Protect those serving overseas, especially Kelsey. Merciful God. For all who suffer in mind, body, and spirit, we pray. Be present with those who live in isolation or fear, especially those who are incarcerated or detained. Comfort all who are sick or grieving, especially those members, family, and friends of St. Matthew's. Merciful God. For this congregation and its ministries, we pray. Prepare teacher, children, teachers, and youth ministry directors for a new year of learning. Embolden our witness to invite others to the table. Merciful God. For all the saints who confess God's name, we give thanks. We especially lift up the thanksgiving today, Reverend Brooks. And then we ask God to bless her in her new life. May we cling to the promise of our risen Savior, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, tomorrow. Comfort the grieving families of Perry Noble and Moody Woods. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. Receive the prayers of your children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love. 
through Jesus Christ, our holy wisdom. This time we'll have our offering. Uh, please be seated.
And the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us praise our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Can I invite you to uh, maintain our distance as you come forward for communion and uh, come forward with your hands open that God gives you his grace in his son, Christ Jesus our Lord, his body and blood. In Christ's presence, there is fullness of joy. Come to the banquet. Please be seated.
life-giving God, through this meal you have bandaged our wounds and fed us with your mercy. Now send us forth to live for others, both friend and stranger, that all may come to know your love. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. This time we'll have our announcements. Everyone. Beginning Wednesday, September 14th at 5.30, Bell Choir will begin practicing for the 2022-23 season. Adult Choir will begin meeting again on Wednesday, September 14th at 6.30 p.m. We'd love to have some new voices and new bell ringers. If you are interested or the sparks an interest in either of these, please contact Megan Olson. If you would like to enhance our summer music with or summer with music, we still have a few openings left. A sign-up sheet can be found in the foyer. Please help us fill Lutheran World Relief school and personal care kits. The school supplies will be taken off the shelf soon. Kit lists will, can be found in the narthex by the coat rack. St. Matthew's Saintly Spaghetti Supper will be Saturday, September 24th from 4.30 to 7 p.m. Benefits going to Braveheart Children's Advocacy Center. We will be selling tickets for theme-based baskets to be given away the night of the supper. We will be needing some people to help with the supper. We also need finger-sized desserts for the supper. A sign-up sheet will be coming soon. Those S's. St. Matthew's Rally Sunday and all age, and an all ages breakfast will be Sunday, September 18th to celebrate Sunday school. So kids, mark your calendars. Registration for Sunday school will begin at 1015 that day. Everyone is invited to bring an item for breakfast at 1030 to help celebrate. Then the kids will join me for some games and fun. We are in need of volunteers to help with opening and or closing the church on Sundays. There is a sign-up sheet in the narthex. It would be fine for, or it would be for one month at a time. Sunday school will begin September 25th, and there's also a confirmation meeting that will be held October 9th at 10.15 a.m. Also, I saw in, the, in, in an email that the city is beginning to work on repaving Dover Road, our road here. The road will be open on Sunday next week, and we should be able to get into our parking lot. So just in case you see cones up, we are here. All right, everybody is invited in the share room for some coffee and fellowship after. Thank you. I invite you to stand for the benediction. May the God of peace, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you, comfort you, and show you the path of life this day and always. Our sending hymn is number 834, Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise.
in peace. Love your neighbor.